Today, we're starting a new series of videos to go over vertex shaders. Let's go. So in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna talk about all kinds of things related to vertex shaders. We're gonna go over optimization using the vertex shader, sampling textures in the vertex shader, vertex displacement, water animation in the vertex shader, and maybe a few more things. If you have an idea for what you'd like to learn about vertex shaders, maybe put it in the comments down below. Today, we're gonna to jump into Unreal and Unity, and I'm gonna show you how to use the vertex shaders in each of those engines. But first, I wanna do a little review and make sure we're all on the same page and understand what vertex shaders are and how they fit into what we normally do. I've already made a couple of videos that go over the graphics pipeline, so I won't cover everything, but if you want more details on this topic, I'll put a link here up in the right-hand corner and down in the description, and you can click on that to watch the full video that's talking about the graphics pipeline. All right, so let's take a look at the graphics pipeline for a minute. When meshes first come from the CPU into the GPU, the, the meshes are just basically a list of vertices. And the vertices are all in object space, which means their positions are relative to the object's pivot point. So they need to be transformed from object space to clip space, or in other words, to figure out where on the screen the vertices belong. This is the main job of the vertex shader, or this area of the GPU called the programmable vertex processor to get those vertices into the right position on the screen. But the vertex shader can do a lot more than that. We're operating on each vertex and we can output all kinds of data from them, UV coordinates, color, normals, and more. Basically, any information that can be stored in a vertex can be processed in the vertex processor here in the vertex shader. So, after the vertex shader runs, the GPU moves all of that data through a process called rasterization and interpolation. Here in primitive assembly first, and then rasterization and interpolation next. In this process, the GPU is creating triangles and then converting those triangles into pixels. Any of the data that was computed here in the vertex shader is interpolated into pixels. This means that the GPU figures out what the data should be at each pixel based on the pixel's relationship to the three nearest vertices. So for example, I have three vertices here, red, green, and blue, and these vertices have been transformed into clip space in the vertex shader. And then once that happens, we go into primitive assembly here and we get a triangle created between those three vertices. Then we get the process of rasterization, which is dividing that triangle up into pixels on the screen. And then finally, interpolation. So the color of each of these vertices is interpolated or made a gradient uh, into the pixels. So the red vertex was here, for example, and the blue one was down here. So we can see a nice gradient from red to blue across these pixels. Each pixel gets its own unique value using linear interpolation, or actually it's the process called barycentric coordinates um, between each of the vertices. So in this example, we can see color. We've got red, green, and blue that are being uh, interpolated to the pixels, but the same process also applies for all of the other vertex data. The UV coordinates get interpolated, the normals get interpolated, all of the vertex data basically gets interpolated into the pixels and at that point we can run the programmable pixel processor or the pixel shader uh, which determines the final output color of the pixels based on all of this data that's coming in all right so we've got vertex sh shaders running here in this part of the process and pixel shaders running here in this part of the process so what do we actually learn from knowing this well, first, uh, we can see that there are two different places uh, that we can put math or that we can compute our own math in uh, the GPU. There's the vertex shader and there's the pixel shader. 
And the second thing that we can learn is that there are far fewer vertices than there are pixels. So if we do math in the pixel shader, it's gonna be done for every single one of these pixels on every frame. But if we do math in the vertex shader, we're only going to be doing it uh, three times instead of you know dozens or even hundreds of times for the pixels. So what we learned from that is that it's more efficient to do math in the vertex shader. And we're gonna talk about that more in next week's video. Uh, so I hope you look forward to that one. And then thirdly, it's important to know that we have limited bandwidth in between the vertex shader and the pixel shader. So if we're doing a lot of calculations in the vertex shader, we need to be careful not to try to pass too much data in between these two shaders. There is a hardware limit on the uh, amount of data that can be passed. I think uh, in DirectX 9, it's like 10 interpolators. And in DirectX 10, it's like 32 interpolators, something like that. Anyways, it's different based on the kind of hardware that you're targeting. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, it is good to do math in the vertex shader, but there is a limitation for how much can be that can be passed between these two. Okay, so I've given you a little bit of background and showing you kind of the basics of how a GP, GPU works, uh, doing math in the vertex shader, passing it into the pixel shader, and then computing the final color. Now that we have that background out of the way, let's jump right into the game engines and I'll show you in Unreal and Unity how to actually use the vertex shader. We're gonna start out in Unity today and then we'll jump over to Unreal in just a minute. All right, here we are in Unity and what I wanna do is show you a couple of different ways of using the vertex shader or creating vertex shaders in Unity. So. In Unity, it's fairly obvious that we have two different stages happening here. We have the vertex stage and the fragment stage, and that's indicated by these two different boxes here on the max master stack. And you can see by default, uh, we've exposed a couple of different parameters um, that you can pass into the vertex stage. We have position, normal, and tangent. And if you don't connect anything to these, uh, that's no problem. Uh, the shader will just go ahead and do its normal thing. It'll create normals, positions, and tangents and pass them through to the pixel stage. Um, but what you can do is if you plug something into tangent, normal, or position, you'll be able to alter what's happening. So for example, if you want to move the vertices around, which is a topic we're going to get to in two weeks, uh, you'd pass different positions into um, the position input here. And uh, that would allow you to change the position of your vertices, for example, um, before that data goes into uh, the fragment or the pixel stage. So you can alter the position, the normal or the tangent if you want to. But what if you want to compute something else? What if you want to uh, compute the distance the ver vertices are from the camera, for example, or something like that. How would you do something other than position, normal, and tangent? Well, uh, that's what the feature called custom interpolators is for. And let me show you how to do that. So if I pick the vertex stage here and I hit the space bar, it brings up this menu that allows me to add other blocks to my vertex stage. And there's this item here called custom interpolator. And what that will do, it is, it, it'll get me a new input that I can basically pass anything into um, to compute what I want to, to do in the vertex stage. And if I select this block over here in the inspector, you can see I can define uh, what kind of data it is and what its name will be. So maybe I want to call it my extra data, you know, just for fun. And then we're gonna pass something, uh, we can compute something here in the vertex stage, pass it in. But then the next question becomes, how do I access this then in the pixel shader? So let's just say uh, I do a bunch of math and I compute a color. And there's my color, we're gonna make it red. And I can connect that to this my extra data custom interpolator. So whatever math I'm doing here is getting computed per vertex, not per pixel, 
It's happening in the vertex shader, so it's being computed per vertex. Well, how do I then access that data in the pixel shader? So once I have this block here that's a custom interpolator, once I hit, then I can hit the space bar, and now you can see I have this new category that shows up in my menu called custom interpolator. And if I open this up, there's the node that I just created over here, my extra data. But now my extra data appears here as uh, a custom interpolator node, and I can use it in the pixel shader. So now I can plug this into my base color, for example, and whatever math I did here, maybe I multiplied my color by two and then passed it in. So this math here is being done in the vertex shader, and now I can access it in the pixel shader. And you can see we have this little line here, and that is illustrating uh, the interpolation. So this line represents the fact that the data is being computed per vertex, but then it's being interpolated to the pixels. So the data that comes in here is actually per pixel, uh, where the data that's going in uh, is being computed per vertex. All right, so that's how you do, or that's how you use vertex shaders in Unity. Uh, so Shader Graph has a really nice way of differentiating between the vertex stage and the fragment stage or pixel stage, and it makes it pretty obvious uh, what's being done per vertex and what's being done per pixel. So we can change positions, normals, and tangents, uh, but we can also change other things like uh, UV coordinates or color, for example, uh, and do all of that math in the vertex shader. And then uh, in the pixel shader, we can access it here with custom interpolators. Next week, we're going to talk about how to use this process uh, to do some optimization. Um, so I hope you tune in for that one. But for now, let's switch over to Unreal and I'll show you how to create vertex shaders there. All right, here we are in Unreal and I'm gonna show you how to do things in the vertex shader in Unreal. The first way uh, is built right into the root node here and that is this input called world position offset. So if we wanna change or animate the position of the vertices, uh, they come in in their default locations but if we want to change that, we can pass something here into the world position offset and move them around. So for example, if I hold down three and click, I'll get this value here, uh, zero, 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 and I can plug that into world position offset. And obviously that's not going to offset anything at all. But if I type a value in here, for example, one, it's going to offset uh, the position of my vertices by one centimeter. Let's actually do it 100, so it'll offset it by um, a meter. And you can see over here, now my preview uh, sphere is gone. Where did it go? Well, it moved a meter over uh, to the side. So that's how, that's one way of creating uh, world position offsets or doing things in the vertex shader in Unreal. The other way to do it is with this node, uh, let's see, it's called Vertex Interpolator. And so this node, you can see it says VS here and PS here. That means things that are coming into this side of the Vertex Interpolator are being done in the Vertex Shader, and things that are coming out this side are happening in the Pixel Shader. And so this is an easy way of saying like anything on the left side of this node is gonna be happening in the vertex shader and anything that comes out the right side is gonna be happening in the pixel shader. So it's fairly straightforward to say, I wanna do some math and I'm gonna calculate a color, for example. Uh, maybe we'll just make that a vector three. There's our color. And maybe we'll multiply it by two, just like we did in Unity a minute ago. And now that math is happening in the vertex shader and whatever comes out the other side is ready to be used in the pixel shader, just like that. So instead of um, showing the vertex stage and the fragment stage differently in the master stack, like in Unity, we basically just have this one node that represents that and anything we plug into here 
is going to happen in the vertex stage automatically. All right, so I hope you come back next week. We'll be talking about the kinds of things that we can optimize in a shader so that they're only done once per vertex instead of for every pixel. I'll show you some little tips and tricks for how to make your shaders run faster in certain situations. And I'll even show you some situations where it doesn't work. Uh, so be sure to come back next week for that. In the meantime, uh, be sure to leave a comment down below if there's something specific you want to learn about Vertex shaders. And let's all look forward to the next couple of weeks where we get to learn about these things. All right, that's it for today. Have a great week, everybody.